Let's open up with 1 Corinthians 11 and 19. This is for those of you who may be confused as to the crack pipe doctrine that's out there. And that's what it is, a crack pipe doctrine. Uh, here's a question for you. Here's a question for you. When the Most High um, wanted to bring in the scattered Israelites, the Gentile Israelites, who did he reveal it to first? Raise your hand if you got the answer. Nobody has an answer. One hand. Okay. Let's see this young man. Give me your name. Stand up. Give me your name. And give me your answer. Test and test. Show on. Brother Show Joseph. On. Brother who? Joseph. Joseph. Okay. You're on. Go. Peter. Peter. Very good. Very good. Wait, wait. Hold on. Keep, take the mic back. And after he gave it to Peter, there was a certain confusion in the church regarding it. Who did the Lord send to inquire of Peter whether the Gentile Israelites could receive salvation? Who was sent to Peter regarding the confusion in the church? I gave you key words there. Paul. You sure? No. Okay. Somebody else. Since you're not sure, I'm not going to say yeah or nay. Brother Joe Marama. It was Paul. Very good. It was Paul. See? See? He answered with authority. You were confused. I can tell you were not sure. But that's the answer. It's Paul. The, the point of that history is this. When the Most High reveals uh, a mystery, he reveals it to the top so that when there's confusion, Paul had to go to Peter about it because Peter was the senior man. You don't read where it starts from somebody kicked out of the church and they receive revelation from God. Where is that in the Bible? Give me that Psalm 11 and 10, please. Now you got these dudes that got kicked out, ex-crackheads and all of that. Yeah, 12 hour Sabbath and brothers be confused. Y'all, whoever's confused, you're stupid as hell. They saw an Edomite website and now want to bring a doctrine in. From people, give me that first John 2, uh, 19, is, it, is that what I want? They were not of us, if they were of us. That one. It's in first John chapter two, I think. Who knows where it is? 219, read that. Who's reading for First. First John chapter two, verse 19. And it says, they went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. Now you don't read nowhere in the Bible where people that left the followers of Christ was re received revelations from God. It's not in there. But for some reason, in 2018, the Negro, that's why the Negro was made up in the science, in a science uh, laboratory. He's got to be the dumbest creature on earth. He leaves the servants of God, smokes crack and weed, and receives revelation, and people go, yeah, that might be right. You dumb as hell and deserve to get confused. Give me that 1 Corinthians 11 and 19. This is the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 11, verse 19. For there must be also heresies among you, that they which are approved may be made manifest among you. There must be heresies. Must be heresies. So that those that are approved may be made manifest. Okay? So don't ever think it's going to end here with that foolishness. There's going to be more. It's going to be more and more and more. Because the Lord is going to... Remember, it says many are called, but what? Few are chosen. chosen. Everybody in this room has been called. The chosen are going to be those that endure to the end. They hear the heresies and go, no, nope, that ain't right. And continue on with their purpose with the Lord, his truth. Give me that Deuteronomy 30 about these heresies. There must needs be, so people, women go, why does the Lord allow this to go on? He's going to make manifest who it is and who are not. Is it Deuteronomy 30 I want? I want the one that says, bear with me, about the witch. Who knows what that is? If there be a prophet among you, it's in Deuteronomy, mm, it's been a while. 
Anybody know what I'm talking about? Um, 13 and 1. Dream of dreams. That's it. Deuteronomy 13 is it? No. Deuteronomy chapter 13 and verse 1. Yes, that's it. Deuteronomy 13 1 is a precept for what we read in 1 Corinthians 11 19 about those heresies that must come. Watch this. If there arise among you a prophet or a dreamer of dreams, and give thee a sign or wonder. Like many of these Christian ministers say, I have a word of knowledge from God for you, son. A word of knowledge. And they may, may, and they may tell you something that only you know about. And you go, that's of God. Go ahead. And the sign or the wonder come to pass. That's what I was saying. Mm -hmm. whereof, he, whereof he spake unto thee, saying, let us go after other God. Now they say, see, son. I gave you that word of knowledge. Let's go back to the Baptist church. Let's go to the uh, Pentecostal church and worship white Jesus all over again because you, you left your first love. And you go, yeah, you know, you had a word of knowledge for me. Best friend of never tell me nothing that's in person in my life. God's dealing with the Baptist church. We don't. Let us go after other gods. That's the other gods. Which thou hast not known. Uh -huh. And let us serve them. Go ahead. Thou shalt not hearken unto the words of that prophet. Y'all see that? Thou shalt not hearken unto the words of that prophet. The Lord don't care if he gave you a word of knowledge and it came to pass. In three days, you're going to get a job. Hey, three days later, hey, mm -hmm. I got a job. Woo. Pastor, go, come on to my church. You go, yeah, 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 yeah. Read. Thou shalt not hearken unto the words of that prophet or that dreamer of dreams, for the Lord your God proveth you. See that? He's proving you. He's proving you. Why? Go ahead. To know whether ye love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. So there's a purpose behind that word of knowledge, that dream that came to pass, that prophecy that came to pass. He's proving you to see if you love him. Because when that dude said, let's go worship a white Jesus again, you, go, you know what that means? False Jesus means no commandments, no laws, nothing. Come as you be, stay as you are. And you go, yeah. It says the Lord proveth you. What? Read that part again. For the Lord your God proveth you to know whether you love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. That's the same thing that we just read in 1 Corinthians eleven nineteen. There must needs be heresies that the Lord, how does it go again? There must needs be heresies that they which are approved may be made manifest. Everybody in here ain't been approved yet. Okay, they gotta be made manifest. Let them heresies pop up. You gonna see, hey, multiple wives, yeah, whoa! Every whole monger and mama jump up and gonna run with that one. Let's read on. Verse three, I'm sorry, verse four. Ye shall walk after the Lord your God and fear him and keep his commandments. That's the point. Keep his commandments. Keep his commandments. That is the point right there. That's why he's proving you. That's why he allows those prophecies and dreams come to pass. Because when they do, and they do, or the, your, it might even be your mama. I had a dream, son, I had a dream. This happened, you had them green socks and such as that happened, and sure enough it happens. Now you go, mama, you right. I'm with you, mama, you simple as hell. You know your mama don't keep no commandments. Not one. Go ahead. And obey his voice, and ye shall serve him, and cleave unto him. And that prophet, or that dream of dreams, shall be put to death. See what the Lord says? I don't care if that vision they had come to pass. That dude need to die. Male or female needs to die. Go ahead. Because he hath spoken to turn you away from the Lord your God, which brought you out of the land of Egypt, and redeemed you out of the house of bondage, to thrust thee out of the way which the Lord thy God commanded thee to walk in, so shalt thou put the evil away from the midst of thee. Yeah, see, that? See, see, people don't understand the most, all right? Well, everybody want to see a sign. Everybody want to see, I want to see a miracle. You ain't going to see nothing. Hold that, hold that. Give me that in first Ezra. You know what I want. Second Ezra, uh, chapter one. You want to see this, you want to see that. Most high gonna send a false prophet right in the midst of you and tell you things that only you know are gonna go, that's of the Lord. Mm -hmm. You're right to draw your simple self out. Because you ain't studied nothing. Second Ezra chapter one about I take the grace of the little ones. 
37. 37. Second Ezra chapter 1, verse 37. I take to witness the grace of the people to come. Mm -hmm. That's us. Whose little ones rejoice in gladness. That's us training up, raising our children in God's laws and commandments. Because the, he's not looking for just one generation. He wants that next generation also of our offspring. That's going to worship and rejoice. So Feast of Tabernacles come around. Our kids supposed to be, oh, I can't wait for that holiday to come. Okay, why? Because they know they're going to be rejoicing in the Lord. Go ahead. And though they have not seen me with bodily eyes. We have not seen the Lord with bodily eyes. Go ahead. Yet in spirit, they believe the thing that I say. Yet in spirit, we believe the Bible. We believe what this book says. Go ahead. And now, brother, behold what glory and see the people that cometh from the east unto whom I will give for leaders Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Osias, um, Amos, and Micah, Joel, Abdias, and Jonas. Now, did you get to the part? I want, though they, uh, let's start up above it, 35. Verse 35. Your houses will I give to a people that shall come. That's us. We're which, gonna come from here and go over there back to the homeland, go ahead. Which not having heard of me, yet shall believe me. Because we didn't know about the Most High. We knew about Caesar Bonjea. That's all we knew. That's what it's talking about, go ahead. To whom I have showed no signs. Ah, that's what I wanted right there. To whom I have showed no signs. A lot of women always say, I want to see a sign and a wonder. That's what the Lord says, send that false prophet to her simple mind. She don't believe the scriptures. She want to see something. She want to dream a vision. That's what she want. Read that again. Your houses will I give to a people that shall come, which not having heard of me, yet shall believe me, to whom I have showed no signs, yet they shall do that I have commanded them. See that? Although we see no signs, no wonders, no miracles, we're going to believe what this book says. And you know what? And, and somebody might right now might be thinking, but didn't the Lord say he would pour out his spirit upon all flesh? Give me that in Joel chapter 2. Then the Lord said, you're going to pour the spirit of all flesh and the sons and daughters shall see dreams and visions. And... Let's get that. It's Joel 2, right? That's what I'm thinking. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Give me that. It's like the last seven verses or something like that. Joel. You can't wait. Yeah, I'm in Joel right here. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Uh -huh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Uh -huh. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. And also upon the servants. Wait, 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 wait. What do you think those dreams and visions will coincide with? Right. Our dreams and visions are going to be based on this. It ain't going to be, hey, you had on Green Sox Tuesdays, and then we're meant to go worship the white man as Jesus. And we go, yeah, no. So don't get it twisted. That's why we must study. So when somebody comes with a dream, I remember uh, the last school, remember that sister that used to be with us? Uh, I ain't going to mention her name. When we was at 1088. I know who you're talking about. Big Toe. Yeah, Big Toe. That's what we're going uh, yeah, to call her Bigfoot. Uh, she always had dreams. Oh, and then when there was problems in the church, she would go, if you had just listened to my dreams, this would not have happened. I said, I'm not on this earth to listen to your dreams. I'm on this earth to do what this Bible says. Right. Give me that, uh, uh, Jeremiah 23, about he that have a dream, let him tell his dream. Or he that have my word, let him speak my word faithfully. That's what I want. It might be chapter 25, it's in the 20s. Bear with me. I thought it was 23, chapter 23, but I could be wrong. I know 23, 23 is Martin, right? It's, we always precept that with him. 23, 28. 26, 28? 23, yeah, let's start at 25. Jer Jeremiah chapter 23, verse 25. I have heard what the prophet said, that prophesy lies in my name, saying, I have dreamed, I have dreamed. Yeah, that was famous during the civil rights era. I have dreamed, dreamed. I had a dream that little white boys and white girls and black would hold hands with black boys and black girls and tiptoe through the tulips. Yeah, that's a dream, all right? Go ahead. 
How long shall this be in the heart of the prophets that prophesy lies? See that? That's a prophecy of lies. Go ahead. Yeah. They are prophets of the deceit of their own heart, mm -hmm. which think to cause my people to forget my name by their dreams. What does it mean, which think to cause my people to forget my name by their dreams? That's, that's all I want. What does that mean? Forget my name by their dreams. Who can help me with that? Let me hear this young man right here. Stan, give me your name. Soldier Hezekiah. Hezekiah. So what does that part mean? Um, to forget the commandments. Exactly. That because the precepts what we read in Deuteronomy 30. The false prophet comes up so that you don't keep the commandments. That's what it's saying. I know some of y'all are saying Yahweh. I'm saying you're going to forget Yahweh. Hmm. Ain't what it's talking about. It's talking about God's commandments. Make us forget this. Okay, read that again, Cap. Which think to cause my people to forget my name by their dreams. Right. Forget God's commandments, go with my dream. Mm -hmm. Didn't have a dream, I had a dream you got a job last month, right? You got that job, right? I had a dream you was gonna get a wife, right? And you got that wife, right? That's what they do. Go ahead. Which they tell every man to his neighbor, as their fathers have forgotten my name for Baal. Right, we forgot the commandments of God instead of serving Baal. Go ahead. The prophet that hath a dream, let him tell a dream. So any prophet, he said, you go tell your dream. Go ahead. And he that hath my word, let him speak my word faithfully. And he that has the word, let him speak my word faithfully. Go ahead. What is the shaft to the wheat? When you look at wheat, around wheat you have shaft, or what we will call today the husk. Go ahead. What is the shaft to the wheat, saith what, the Lord? What is the shaft? What is the husk compared to the wheat? The wheat is what you want. The husk or the shaft is what comes off of it. That's useless. So God says his word is the wheat. The dream is compared to the shaft or the husk that's around the wheat. Go ahead. Is not my word like as a fire, saith the Lord, and like a hammer that breaketh the rock in pieces? The most I said his word is like a hammer that breaks rocks. That's why when we teach, we got to speak according to this word. Okay, that's what we must do. Let's go back to, uh, no, no, keep reading down, keep reading down. Therefore, behold, I am against the prophets, saith the Lord, that steal my words, everyone from his neighbor. So when it says that steal my words, everyone from his neighbor, here you go, you know, you learn, you're learning the commandments of the Most High, and this false prophet comes and tells you a dream, and you forget everything you study, and you run with that. Go ahead. Is not my word like as fire, saith the Lord, and like a hammer that breaketh the rock in pieces? Therefore, behold, I am against the prophets, saith the Lord, that steal my words, every one from his neighbor. Behold, I am against the prophets, saith the Lord, that use their tongues and say, he say it. Right. They say, I'll give you another example. They say, God gave David, uh, what's the thing they said they gave David? God gave David? The, the Mark and David, the well, six-pointed well. star. That, I remember, I, I, we were all taught that. Mm -hmm. And then I remember one of the elders said, well, I never read that in the Bible. So we went on a campaign to search the scriptures. And guess what? It ain't in there. It ain't in there. You could, we did find it though, but it was in the Kabbalah. <laughs> so when they say God gave David the six-pointed star, that's not biblical. And that's an example of what it says. Wait, what did you just read? Verse 31. Behold, I am against the prophets, saith the Lord, that use their tongues and say, he say it. Right, like they'll say another thing, Christmas, the birth of Jesus. Yeah, God says we're supposed to celebrate that. Really? Where is that in the Bible? Show me the scripture. Uh, it ain't in there. They made it, made it up. Go ahead. Behold, I am against them that prophesy false dreams. Save the Lord. You know, why is it a false dream? It came to pass. It's a false dream because, let me see who got the answer before I give it. You with the black shirt. Yes, you right here. Why is it a false dream? Why is it a false dream? And it came to pass. What makes it false? Give me your name. Brother Zerubbabel. Brother Zerubbabel. Why is the dream a false dream that it came to pass? Because God is trying to. Give me more than that. Uh, that's all I got. No, you got it. You just got to think. What makes it a false dream? 
it goes against the commandments. Right. Because it's taking you away from the commandments to another God. That's what makes it a false dream, regardless if it came to pass. Everybody understand that? Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. We don't capitalize it. Behold, I am against them that prophesy false dreams, saith the Lord, and do tell them and cause my people to err by their lies mm -hmm. and by their likeness. That word likeness means stupidity. Their ignorance. Go ahead. Yet I sent them not. The Lord said, I sent them not. Go ahead. Nor commanded them. Mm -hmm. Therefore they shall not profit this people at all, saith the Lord. That's what he said. Let's go back to Deuteronomy 30. Deuteronomy 30. And you was, I mean 13, I apologize. You're saying 30. Maybe there's something in there to hold me. <laughs> okay. I got to look at it later on. Go back to Deuteronomy 13. Verse 1 again. No, no. Where did you leave off in 13? Start at 6. Verse 6. If thy brother... No, start at 5. Verse 5. And that prophet or that dreamer of dreams shall be put to death because he hath spoken to turn you away from the Lord your God, which brought you out of the land of Egypt and redeemed you out of the house of bondage to thrust thee out of the way which the Lord thy God commanded commanded thee to walk in, so shalt thou put the evil away from the midst of thee. Watch this, read on. If thy brother, the son of thy mother, or thy son, or thy daughter, or the wife of thy bosom. Now I wanted to get to that part about your son, or your daughter, or your wife. Go ahead, or your brother, go ahead. Or thy friend. Or your friend. I always talk about friendship. That's right, friendship. Because some of y'all are in here for friendship. You're not in here for the love of the Lord. You're here because my buddy is here. Now when your buddy go off, then you go. Mm -hmm. That's what you see on Facebook. My buddy can't come back, then I'm out. That's what you see. That's what this is talking about. Read it again. If thy brother, the son of thy mother, or thy son, or thy daughter, or the wife of thy bosom, or thy friend, which is as thine own soul. That's how much you love him, which is as thine own soul. Entice thee secretly. Entice you secretly, saying what? Saying, let us go and serve other gods, which thou hast not known, thou nor thy fathers, namely of the gods of the people which are round about you, nigh unto thee, or, or far off from thee, from the one end of the earth even unto the other end of the earth. Now people today, they generally don't say, hey, let's serve another God. They'll say such things as, um, let's go back to the Christian church, or let's go back to Islam. Mostly it's Christian church, that's what they say, uh, which takes you right back to Caesar Borgia. But now watch the judgment for that, go ahead. Verse, thou, eight. verse eight, thou shalt not consent unto him, nor hearken unto him, neither shall thine eye pity him. I guarantee you, that, like for example, the two clowns that smoke and weed talking about a new understanding of the Sabbath, they will never say, let's serve another God. They'll say, oh, the God we serve is the God of the Bible. Every, even Islam says the God they serve is the God of the Bible. Mm -hmm. Everybody says that, but nobody keep commandment one. So these clowns saying, we don't got to keep the Sabbath. That's our God. And then brother, yeah, that's our God, you simple as hell. Go ahead, read it again. Thou shalt not consent unto him, nor hearken unto him, neither shalt thine eye pity him, neither shalt thou spare, neither shalt thou conceal him, but thou shalt surely kill him. Thine hand shall be first upon him to put him to death, and afterward the hand of all the people. Stop. Where is that what we just read in the New Testament? Where is that in the New Testament? I want y'all to think now. Now, I'm going I'm to help you out here. Now, what might be catching you up is the part where it says, uh, verse 9, was, but thou shalt surely kill him. So don't let that trip you up. Remember in John 8, when they were supposed to kill the woman caught in adultery, Christ said, he that is without sin cast the first stone. But what did it tell the woman in response? Woman, what? Go sin, no Go sin no more. So Christ wasn't executing judgment in terms of death yet. That's coming in the second return. So keep that in mind. So I don't want that verse 9 here to trip you up. 
But Christ and the apostles said something similar, verse 6 through 8. Only one hand is up. Okay, let's see. Uh, Give me your name. My name is Soldier Gamaliel, and uh, Romans 6, 23. Romans 6, 20, no, mm -mm. no, 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 no. Soldier uh, Lazar, Matthew 5, verse 30. Let's hear it. It says, uh, and if thy right hand offends thee, cut it off. Exactly. That's it. Read the whole verse. Read the whole verse. Matthew 5, verse 30. Mm -hmm. And if thy right hand offend thee, cut it off, and cast it from thee. For it, for it is profitable for thee that one of thy members should perish, perish, and not that thy whole body should be cast into hell. So why is it using why is Christ giving the analogy of your hand? or your foot or your eye. Why? Because it's like a family member. I know it's hard for you to cast them out, right. but it's better for you to go ahead and let them go. Exactly. And you'll be corrupted by their you know, Exactly. By their That's what verse 6 is saying here in Deuteronomy 13 again. Deuteronomy 13 verse 6. If thy brother, the son of thy mother, or thy son or thy daughter, or the wife of thy bosom, or thy friend, which is as thine own soul, entice thee secretly, saying, Let us go and serve other gods which thou hast not known, thou nor thy fathers. That's your hand or your foot or your eye. Your brother, your son, your daughter, your wife, or your friend. That's your hand or your foot. That's somebody you love immensely. Moses said they got to die. Christ said cut them off. It's the same thing. It is the same thing. And that's, that's proving you. Get that again in Corinthians. No, I mean Deuteronomy 13. For the Lord your God proveth you. It's in the same chapter. Verse 3. Verse 3. Deuteronomy 13 verse 3. Thou shalt not hearken unto the words of that prophet or that dream of dreams. For the Lord your God proveth you to know whether ye love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. Some of us get tried. That's a trial for some of us in here. You being this truth, it's a, and your trials don't always happen right away. It takes time. It takes time. Some of you, like there's a sister in New York. Her daughter says, Ma, I don't want to follow this Bible no more. I don't believe this Israelite stuff. I want to wear my spandex. I want to hang out, have boyfriends. She says, no, you're not going to do it. She said, and the girl is about 16. She said, I want to live with 16. She said, I want to live with my daddy. I don't want to live with you no more because they were separated. So the mother's holding on to the daughter. No, 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 I'm going to keep you. I'm going to keep you. So the daughter figures out how am I going to get away from this woman. So she goes to school and says, my mama beat me. The school, what? Your mother beat you? They call the police. They call child services who call the police. Long story short, ends up in court. She get all messed up in there crying a daughter and sitting in with her spandex on looking at her mama. Told you, another one, brother in Atlanta. Marries the woman, she got kids. And the, one of the older boys says, I don't believe this no more. I don't, I'm not following. I'm going to be with my mama. I don't want to be with you, Dad. He says, no, you got to stay in the truth. You got to stay in the truth. I'm trying to save your life. He said, Dad, I want to be in that no more. I want to do what I want to do. I want to smoke weed and hang out with my boys and live with Ma. No, 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 you're going to stay. Go to school. He says, okay. Go to school. My dad beat me. Really? Call ACS. Call the police. Brother going to call me. I'm in jail. Why? They, called, they said I beat him. I said, you simple as I told you let that nigga go. Let him go. New York. Remember the brother, uh, unbelieving wife? She's never come to school. He says, brother, you know, we argue all the time. We said, brother, you've been with us about a year and a half. It's about that time you uh, let her go. You've been trying to teach her. She ain't listening. He goes, no, I'm going to hold on to her. All right. I think maybe a week or two later, we get to call. He's in jail. He trying to, she want to cook on the Sabbath. 
He sh shut off the stove, got into it, she hit him, he hit her back, then he beat the hell out of her. Cops came, locked the brother. Deuteronomy chapter 13, verse 6. If thy brother, the son of thy mother, or thy son, or thy daughter, or the wife of thy bosom, or thy friend, which is as thine own soul. I like that part. Which is as thine own soul. That's how much you love them. Go ahead. Entice thee secretly, saying, let us go and serve other gods. Again, they're not going to say those words, let's serve another god. But you, will, you can tell by their speech, they don't want to keep the commandments. That's the point. Mm -hmm. They don't want to keep the commandments. Go ahead. Entice thee secretly, saying, let us go and serve other gods, which thou hast not known, thou nor thy fathers, namely of the gods of the people which are round about you, nigh unto thee or far off from thee. The point of all of this, y'all write this down. Strength is a product of struggle. Strength is a product of struggle. You'll never get to the point of strength without a struggle in your life. And when I say a struggle in your life, I'm not talking about when you was in the world, you was in jail, you did, that's not the struggle. The struggle is when you come into this knowledge, this truth, and you catch it hell. That's the struggle. Okay, give me that in Job chapter one. Job chapter one, I'm gonna show you. As soon as you bring up some people, I've been struggling, everybody's struggling all their life. Like, Frank, before you get Job, get me a Sirach chapter 40, I think it is, where it says something like, something to all the sons of Adam. The person and you know I can't quote. Adam, right? Yes, I can't quote, it's been a while. Verse 1, Rachel Vance. Yeah, that's it, verse 1. Sirach 41. This is the book of Sirach, chapter 40, verse 1. Great travail is created for every man, and a heavy yoke is upon the sons of Adam, from the day that they go out of their mother's womb to the day that they return to the mother of all things. That's the earth. But now that's one context. Now watch the next context, Sirach 2, verse 1. Ecclesiasticus, chapter 2, and verse 1. Now notice what we just read in Sirach 40 says, great travail is created for every man of the sons of Adam. Now watch this. Chapter two, verse one. My son, if thou come to serve the Lord, prepare thy soul for temptation. So that's something different now. Sirach two is talking about when you come to serve the Lord, prepare your soul for temptation. So, uh, Sirach 40, it says everybody goes through struggles. So we're not talking about Sirach 40, we're talking about Sirach chapter two, verse one. When you come into this truth, now that's when your, your trials come. That's where the real struggle comes. Cause you in the world, you get a girlfriend, you don't like it, you jump to the next one, and the next one, and the next one. You might go through three a week, four a week, some of y'all. Then you come into the truth, you can't find one. Brother, it's been five years since I had a woman. It's been five years since I can't even, I can't even find one now. So it's different now. You come in this truth, the Lord says, I'm going to try you. I'm going to try you. Now, where did I say go originally? Job. Job chapter 1. Thank you. Job chapter 1. Go ahead. Start at verse 1. Mm -hmm. There was a man in the land of Uz, whose name was Job, and that man was perfect and upright, and one that feared God and excused evil. So, people read that and go, see, Job was an Edomite, because Uz is in the land of Edom. No. Holak, get Job 30 30. Job was not an Edomite. People get stupid, because they, they got an affinity for their oppressor. Mm -hmm. Read that. My skin is black. That's all I need to read to know Job ain't the Edomite. The second I read that, you ain't deceiving me to think he's the Edomite. You simple bond. Let's go back to Job 1. Job. And I want verse uh, 12. 
verse 12. And those start at 10. Verse 10. Has now no start at verse 9, I'm sorry. Verse 9. Then Satan answered the Lord and said, Doth Job fear God for naught? Has not thou made an hedge about him and about his house and about all that he hath on every side? Thou hast blessed the work of his hands, and his substance is increased in the land. But put forth thine hand now, and touch all that he hath, and he will curse thee to thy face. Now look, look at this. And the Lord wait, said, wait, 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 wait. Look at verse 8. I should have started there. Verse 8. And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and a perfect and an upright man? One that feareth God and excueth evil? You know when that happens, when your name is on the most high's lips? When you come to serve the Lord. Now your name comes up in conversation. And not immediate. Not immediate. It takes time. As, as you study and learn and apply, and then the Lord says to Satan, Hey, have you considered this my servant such and such, such and such, such and such? Then Satan responds, verse 9, then Satan answered the Lord and said, Doth Job fear God for naught? Has not thou made an hedge about him and about his house and about all that he hath on every side? Thou hast blessed the work of his hands, and his substance is increased in the land. But put forth thine hand now and touch all that he hath, and he will curse thee to thy face. So Satan says regarding Job now. Now Job, his life represents the entire nation of Israel. Yes, Job was real, but his life represents the entire nation of Israel. So I'm using it, however, I want you to see that when you come to serve the Lord, prepare thy soul for temptation. Your name comes up on the Lord's lips to Satan. And Satan said regarding Job, Job only serves you because you protect him. You got, you got blessings on him. Let's do something to him and watch him curse you. Now all this ties in what we read in Deuteronomy 30, I mean 30, I keep saying 30. Deuteronomy 13, 1 Corinthians uh, 11 and 19, uh, all ties together. So, read on. And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, all that he hath is in thy power. Only upon himself put not, put not forth thine hand. So Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord. And there was a day when his sons and his daughters were eating and drinking wine in their eldest brother's house. And there came a messenger unto Job and said, The oxen were plowing and the asses feeding beside them. And the Sabians fell upon them and took them away. Yea, they have slain the servants with the edge of the sword. And I only am escaped alone to tell thee. So verse 15 was the first judgment on Job. Go ahead, now verse 16 is the second, go ahead. While he was yet speaking, there came also another and said, The fire of God is fallen from heaven, and hath burned up the sheep and the servants, and consumed them, and I only am escaped alone to tell thee. So that's the second tragedy that happened to Job. Verse 17. While he was yet speaking, there came also another and said, The Chaldeans made out three bands, and fell upon the camels, and have carried them away, yea, and slain the servants with the edge of the sword, and I only am escaped alone to tell thee. So in verse 15, 16, and 17, Satan touches Job's business and income. That's what he hits, his business, his income. Now verse 18. While he was yet speaking, there came also another and said, Thy sons and thy daughters were eating and drinking wine in their eldest brother's house, and behold, there came a great wind from the wilderness, and smote the four corners of the house, and it fell upon the young men, and they are dead, and I only am escaped alone to tell thee. The fourth judgment was kill his family members, his sons and daughters. So it went from his finance, his income, the first three, the fourth is his family. Now jump to chapter 2 and verse 7. Job 2 and verse 7. So went Satan forth from the presence of the Lord and smote Job with sore boils from the sole of his foot unto his crown. That's the fifth judgment on Job, or temptation or trial, I use that word, his health, his health. So the first three regarded his finance and income. The fourth was his family getting put to death. And the fifth was his health. Go back to Sirach 2 now, in verse 1. 
It all ties together. Sirach chapter 2 verse 1. My son, if thou come to serve the Lord, prepare thy soul for temptation. See that? When you come to serve the Lord, prepare thy soul for temptation. So it's the clock really starts when we repent unto the Lord. Now go back to Job again and go to the last chapter in Job. Uh, the last verse, I think it is. Last two Job, verses, the last two. Job chapter 42 and verse 12. Where it says he was blessed. So the Lord blessed the, the latter end of Job more than his beginning. For he had 14,000 sheep and 6,000 camels and a thousand yoke of oxen and a thousand she asses. He had also seven sons and three daughters. And he called the name of the first Jemima and the name of the second um, Kezia, and the name of the third Karen Hapuk, and in all the land were no woman found so fair as the daughters of Job, and their father gave them inheritance among their brethren. So what I want you to see, Job got back his his finances, his income. He got more sons and daughters. He got his health back. It said God blessed him more than that is again. Now let's go back to Sirach too. Wait a minute, let me look at it. In verse 3. Sirach chapter 2 and verse 3. Read 2 and 3. Yes, sir. Set thy heart aright, and constantly endure, and make not haste in time of trouble. Meaning don't run from this. Don't run. Go ahead when the trouble comes. Go ahead. Cleave unto him, and depart not away. Watch this. That thou mayest be increased at thy last end. That's what happened with Job. He was increased at his last end. So Sirach is saying the message is the same for us today. Don't worry about what you went through. It was all bad, yeah, yeah. But you're going to be increased at the end. Just endure. Go ahead. Whatsoever is brought upon thee, take cheerfully. Now that might seem hard at the time. But we got to go through it. Go ahead. And be patient when thou art changed to a low estate. Job was patient. He was changed to a low estate. He went from the wealth, being the wealthiest man in the East to nothing, almost a vagabond. Go ahead. For gold is tried in the fire, and acceptable men in the furnace of adversity. Let me see who can think. Verse 5, what is verse 5 saying to us that we've been reading all evening? For acceptable men, it says, for gold is tried in the fire, and acceptable men in the furnace of adversity. We've been reading something all night. I'm still thinking, who can tie that verse into what we've been reading? Acceptable men in the furnace of adversity. Um, let me hear you. Shalom, Sergeant Shaq. Um, you're going to be tried, so things are, the Lord's going to let things come to you. No. <laughs> Verse 31 and 32. Luke 22 and verse 31. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for thee, that thy faith fail not, and when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. Now, I just want to pause there for a second. And when thou art converted, what would be the first thought if you were Peter? What would be your first thought when Christ says this? And when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. What would be the first thought? I see a hand over there. Shalom. Shalom, Shalom. Brother Mark Oil. Uh, first thought would be when you come to serve the Lord. Mm -hmm. I mean, a normal thought. Don't give me no scripture. Christ says that you, you've been with Christ for three years now. Remember, Christ was with Peter for about three years, three and a half years. Christ says, when you are converted, 
I want you to strengthen your brethren. What would be the natural thought to come in your mind? Can you repent? No. Let me hear some. Give me the, just pick somebody who got their hand up. I'm going to give you a hint. You've been with Christ for three years. Uh, personally, I'd be like, bro, I've been with you this for three years, hanging with you. What do you mean? I'm not. Right. I'm exactly. Yeah. That's the first thought. Yeah. I, I've been with you for three years. What do you mean when I'm converted? I'm converted already. I'm keeping the commandments. I'm rolling with you. That's what we all say. I'm converted now. Christ said, no, you're not converted yet. He said, when you are converted. That's a heavy statement there. Because remember what Peter was doing. Give me, give me, give me. Uh, give me the scripture where he said, I give you power over devils. Give me that. Is it, mm, when he sent them out by twos, where's that at? Is it Matthew 10 or Luke 10? I got it. Somebody help me. Luke 9 and 1. Okay, let's hear Luke 9 and 1. Let's hear that. Let me hear it. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Luke chapter 9 and verse 1. Then he called his 12 disciples together and gave them power and authority over all devils and to cure diseases. Read. And he sent them to preach the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. Peter and them had spiritual power. They had power. And Christ said, when you're converted, strengthen your brethren. Said, what? The record go, ah! <laughs> I, I, I've been raising the dead. I'm healing the sick. What do you mean when? I've been with you for three years. Lord, what the hell are you talking about? Like I said, when you're converted, strengthen your brethren. Mm. That's some heavy stuff right there. Now watch. Go to Galatians. Show you how simple Peter got. Galatians chapter 2. <coughs> and let's start at verse 11. Galatians chapter 2, verse 11. I'm just giving you an example of Peter's state of mind. Watch. But when Peter was come to Antioch, I withstood, I withstood him to the face, because he was to be blamed. Why? Go ahead. For before that certain came from James, he did eat with the Gentiles. So those scattered Israelites that came from Greek customs and all that, Peter was chilling with them, eating with them. Go ahead. But when they were come, he withdrew and separated himself fearing them which were of the circumcision. But when other Israelites came from James, he said, oh, let me make like I don't know them. Go ahead. And the other Jews dissembled likewise with him, insomuch that Barnabas also was carried away with their dissimulation. But when I saw that they walked not uprightly. See that? When I saw that they walked not uprightly. This is why Christ said, when you are converted, strengthen your brethren. Go ahead. But when I saw that they walked not uprightly according to the truth of the gospel, I said unto Peter, I said unto Peter before them all, if thou being a Jew livest after the manner of Gentiles and not as do the Jews, why compellest thou the Gentiles to live as do the Jews? You see what happened? Peter wasn't walking right. Now this is years later. This Peter's the same man that walked partially on water that healed the sick, raised the dead, and all of that. He still wasn't converted in his spirit yet. So that's why a lot of us, we come in this truth, it takes years to really be converted. Convert. It takes time. It takes time. Remember, what's the name of the, what's the, name of the class I gave it? Struggle, what did I, I give it a term? What is it? Strength is the product of struggle. You have to go through things. Some people come in, they go through nothing. It's like everything they touch is like gold. And then on their seventh or eighth year in the truth, something happens. Things start to go wrong. And then you see, and, and you're shocked at how they react, how they just, oh, I got I'm leaving. And this is the same brother that's on the street teaching, powerful. And you say, oh, this brother's in the spirit. But he ain't been tried. He ain't go through no struggles yet. His life has been smooth sailing since he's been in the truth. That seventh year, that eighth year, now he's catching it. Now you see him, I'm going, I'm leaving. Wow, bro, wow. This is what you, this is what you see on Facebook. 
Brothers you thought was strong, never been through no trial. Their trials took seven, eight years, then bam, if it happened, now they're gone. Now it's a new Sabbath, new understanding, we can smoke weed, we can uh, have multiple wives. This is what you hear, why? Because they, they could not endure when that struggle came. Strength is a product of struggle. Like they say in the gym, no pain what? No gain. No you got to struggle. Like, uh, what's that, there's, that thing, there's a, a little poem, but it's a true poem, I can't even quote it, so I'll just paraphrase it. Uh, a little kid was walking in a forest, and he saw a, uh, like a cocoon, and he saw the butterfly struggling to try to get out. So he tried to help it. He opened the cocoon up so the butterfly could fly. The butterfly fell on the floor. It had not, its wings had not fin finished forming. The wings finished forming, the cocoon opens when the wings finish forming and a, the uh, caterpillar which turns into a butterfly struggles. But when you interfere in that struggle, it never develops into what it's really supposed to be. You understand what I'm saying? Yes, I can't, I forgot how the poem goes. Y'all know what I'm talking about? You don't know what I'm talking about. I don't know what the hell you're talking about. But anyway, it's a scientific fact. Let that caterpillar struggle in the cocoon. It has to go through that so it can develop into that butterfly. If you interfere, it's not going to fully develop. And that's what happens with us in here. That's what happens. We have to go through that struggle. Go back to Sirach 2. Sirach chapter 2 again. No, Luke, uh, Luke 22. I want, to, I want to touch back on that. Luke 22, uh, verse 32. Luke 22? Yeah, verse 32. Mm -hmm. Luke 22, verse 32. But I have prayed for thee, that thy faith fail not. And when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. When you are converted, strengthen your... That took time. That took time. Years. It takes years to be converted. It don't happen. Oh, I come to serve the Lord. I'm, I'm good. Mm -mm. Nope, nope. And it's different for everybody in this room. The most has a time for each and every one of us, and it's different. Yours might be the first year you come in. It's like, damn, why this happening to me? I just got here. Some brothers be on their tenth year. Everything's going good. But one brother, I remember this one brother, I put Louisiana. Everything was going good for him. Neighbors was a high holy day one night, and a neighbor's pit bull came out and tore his eight-year-old boy up. He tore him up. It was terrible. Terrible. And he, he, he didn't know what to do. He, 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 everything was going perfect for him until that night. And it was like a shock. Another brother, I mean, the whole family came in. And a young man drowned. One of the brothers drowned. It's like, what the hell? These are things that the Lord allows to happen to try other spirits. Try spirits. See who's, where everyone's mindset is. Okay. Give me Mark 4. Mark chapter 4. We've gone over this several times about the four types of Israelites. All, everybody in here, everybody listening falls into one of these four categories. All of us. Watch. Verse 15. Mark 4, verse 15. And these are they by the wayside where the word is sown. But when they have heard, Satan cometh immediately and taketh away the word that was sown in their hearts. Stop. That's what we just read in Deuteronomy 13. That's what we read in 1 Corinthians 11, 19. That's what we read in Jeremiah 23 about that spirit that comes to you and says, hey, I dreamt such and such, or I got a word of knowledge, or hey, let's go do this or that. And then you go, oh, okay. That's what verse 1 is talking about. That's that Satan coming for immediately and taking away the word that was sown in their hearts, which is their mind. Verse 16 now is the second type of Israelite. Go ahead. Verse what? 16. Verse 16. And these are they likewise which are sown on stony ground, who, when they have heard the word, immediately receive it with gladness. Now, when you plant a seed and is, uh, you've got a little bit of earth, and there's a stone under it, that 
plant doesn't really take what? It doesn't take root. Okay, so likewise, Christ is saying you have Israelites that come in as truth, and you really don't take root, meaning you're not rooted in this. He's going to explain why, what happens. Go ahead. And have no root in themselves. <laughs> meaning you don't study. And so endure, but for a time. Y'all see that? And so endure, but for a time. He doesn't say how long it is. He says, but for a time. That could be three years. It could be two. It could be one. It could be five. It could be seven. That's what it means. Uh, what, is, what is that again? And so endure, but for a time. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Afterward, when affliction or persecution persecution ariseth for the word's sake, immediately they are offended. Meaning, now you're getting judged because you broke a commandment. Like what we saw uh, with these two dudes that left. You started a coup against this brother over here, and you had witnesses that bear witnesses. Yes, you came to me and said, let's leave and start doing A, B, and C. So now, that's where it says, uh, afterward, when affliction or persecution arises for the word's sake, because you broke some commandment, immediately they are offended. Now, I'm not coming back to hell with y'all. No, no, new Sabbath day. I got new understanding. I got new breakdowns. That's what happens. Because why? You're offended now because it was your turn. You did, rather than say, you know what? You're right. I'm sorry, everybody. Forgive me. Rather than do that, it's nope, 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 nope. So that's the second type of Israelite. Read verse 18 now. And these are they which are sown among thorns. This is the third type now. Such as hear the word, and the cares of this world, and the deceitfulness of riches, and the lust of other things entering in, choke the word, and it becometh unfruitful. So now, that's the next one. So these, these thorns that you are, that the word is sown around, represents the deceitfulness of riches, cares of this world, deceitfulness of riches, and the lust of other things. I mean, the lust of other things could be anything. It can be, it's very, it's very generic, okay? So, I'll give an example. The cares of the world. One of the cares of the world is we want a woman. We want a particular type of house. We want a particular type of job. That's the cares of the world. Next thing's in the deceitfulness of riches. You want to make over and beyond, okay? So that's the deceitfulness of riches. Then it says, and the lusts of other things entering in. That could be power. Some brothers got a lust for power. They just want to dominate over other men. Do this, do that, shut up, sit down. They like that thing. One dude told me, he says he was a boss in the drug world, he's going to be a boss in Israel. And he was a nigga in the world. He came in Israel being a nigga. Where to get rid of that dude? Damn abusing the Lord's people. What the hell is this? So that's that third type right there. And guess what? The cares of the world, that also takes time. It takes time. Sometimes a year, two years, three years, sometimes <coughs> seven. Verse 20 now. Verse 20. It's the fourth type. And these are they which are sown on good ground, such as hear the word and receive it, and bring forth fruit, some thirtyfold, some sixty, and some in a hundred. That's the brother or sister that endures. No matter what trial come their way, they endure it. And they start to grow and develop their character, their mentality, everything starts to grow in them. You everybody see that? Yes, sir. So now I want to jump back up to that number 19 about that third type. Read verse 19 again. Verse 18 and 19 again. And these are they which are sown among thorns, such as hear the word and the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches and the lust of other things entering in. Choke the word, and it becometh unfruitful. The cares of the world. Give me First John. Write this down. Write cares of this world. And we're going to write down First John 2.15. I think that's what I want. It's been a while, been a while. First John. Yes. Yes. First John 2.15. Love not the world. Yeah, this is the cares of the world. It says love not the world. The world, okay? Neither the things that are in the world. Mm -hmm. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. So, love not the world. 
when we love the world, we love Christianity, we love democracy. Because those two, which is all multiculturalism, we love that because it seems to be peace, at peace with everybody, okay? But when you come into the truth of God's laws and you start to keep God's laws, you become an enemy of the state. I just want to put that out there. The commandments, what? See, you can say the white man's the devil or the Farrakhan says it, that's, that's not the problem. The problem is God's laws. That has always been the problem. From the time of Adam and Eve, it was God's laws. That's the problem. So, read that again. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. Why can't I remember, uh, well, there was one brother, he was in the military. He brought uh, a girl from freaking uh, Uzbekistan. Talk about she's Israelite. I said, bro, that's, no, stop. That's not an Israelite. That's, she's from Uzbekistan. She's telling me, what did she say she is? She said she's a white girl. So what are you it's trying to, because he was just so in love, just so, so in love. Read that again. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Mm -hmm. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the flesh, and the lust of the eyes. Because we lust after what, based on what we see. Go ahead. And the pride of life. The pride of life. I want. I want a mansion. I want a yacht. I want a string of palapetes, Apollo ponies. That's what we want. Go ahead. Is not of the Father. It's not of the Father. But is of the world. Go ahead. The world passeth away. See that? It says the world passes away. Go ahead. And the lust thereof. Mm -hmm. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. What's the will of God? Raise, give, raise your hand out with the scripture right here in my left. Right here. Yeah, you. Brother Who Tobias. Are, what's your name? Brother Tobias. Tobias. Yes, Go ahead. Uh, Psalms 40 and 8. Yes, Psalms 40, verse 8. Read it for Psalm 40 and 8. There might be somebody new up in here. Let him read it. Yeah, you read it, Tobias. The book of Psalms, chapter 40, verse 8. I delight to do thy will, O my God. Yea, thy law is within my heart. That's the will, God's law. That is the will. So when we go back to uh, Mark 4 again, what verse we read? Mark 4, verse 19. And the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches. Stop. The deceitfulness of riches. Let's go to 1 Timothy 6. Six and let's start at uh you said first Timothy. Yeah, first Timothy six, let's start at verse nine. First Timothy six verse nine. But they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare. See that? Go ahead. And into many foolish and hurtful lusts, which drown men in destruction and perdition. For the love of money is the root of all evil. So it's not the money, it's the love of it. The love of money is the root of all evil. Go ahead. Which while some coveted after. Which while some coveted after. You know why that's heavy? It's easy to identify a brother or a sister who's breaking the external commandments. Do you know what I mean by external commandments? Like the woman, if she don't have a head cover, you can see that. Or brother, if we don't have fringes, you can see that. Those are external, okay? Those are the easy ones that you can spot. But what about the ones you can't, those sins you can't see? Like covetousness, you can't see it. You have to wait till it manifests itself. So read that part again. For the love of money is the root of all evil. So everybody says, I ain't got the love of money in me. I ain't got the in me, go ahead. Which while some coveted after. Which while some coveted after. While some coveted after. You don't know, you won't know if you got that spirit on you until you are presented or in the situation, in a particular situation. You know what I mean by that? Yes, sir. You'll be walking, you'll see somebody drop a bag of money, and you see all hundreds, Benjamins everywhere. Now you're looking to the left, you're looking to the right, 
And you're trying to see if anybody sees you. Why? Because you want to take that thing. You want to take that thing. I remember I was in a situation like that. I always tell a story. The store got robbed, I had to do a report. A little Chinese lady. And I'm in the room, it's a little three by four room. It's real tight. Monitor's there. And the bell rings, so the lady goes out to enter the, the door. And in there, the robbers had left $100 bills in there still. So I looked at, I said, wow, that's about a good, maybe $700, $800 so right there on the floor. So I started looking around for cameras. <laughs> and I caught myself, why the F am I looking for cameras? I said, I'm the devil, I got the devil on me. Because I would have never said, I, I, well, I would have said, I don't have that spirit on me. But when it was presented, I started looking to the left and looking to the right. I said, that's the devil. But I thank the Lord, I caught myself. So some things you don't know is in you. Give me that Romans 7, 7 and 7. Paul said, I would never have known lust. You don't know you're a homemonger. You think you're good in the spirit. No, you only appear good in the spirit because don't know who woman wants you right now. But wait till one or two or three start throwing that vagina at you. Here, yeah, come get it. Now you're going to see the real you. You know that brother that's always broke, he can't come to camp? But he meet a girl on Facebook who lives in Alabama. You find the money to get to Alabama. But right now, I ain't got no money to come to school. No, I ain't got, I'm not a homemonger. I ain't got a lost problem. Yeah, right. The Lord, the Lord said to Satan, have that girl with the, the 34 Ds. Just holler at him on Facebook and tell him, ask him to come get some. He's going to find that money. He's going to be on the next plane to Georgia. <laughs> Go ahead. Romans 7, verse 7. What shall we say then? Is the law sin? God forbid. Nay, I had not known sin, but by the law. For I had not known lust, except the law had said, Thou shalt not covet. See that? So Paul said he would have never understood lust except by studying the scriptures. So when it presented itself with him, he's identified it quickly. This is what that sin is. Because you meet brothers and sisters in the truth, and they think they, they have no problem. I am wearing my fringes, I have my border of blue. What am I, I come to Sabbath class, I'm not doing nothing wrong. I'm not doing anything wrong. But then they have those other sins that's hard to identify until it presents itself. Pride, envy, jealousy, hatred, covetousness. I'll give you another example. Somebody sent a box of clothes to the school. This is years ago. And I put the box in the back of the school. So I said, uh, after class, I said, yeah, sister sent a box of clothes. Before I could finish the sentence, I saw several brothers jump to that box. And I was, I was said, okay, well, I, I want to see who the first one to run to that damn box. Come, and, that, and it's not poor brothers. So I, I, was, I was able to see who's covetous and who's not. I said, up there, look at this, look at this right here. And of course, you had certain brothers and sisters that were poor, and my thought is, let them get it first. But mm -mm, not the brothers with the gold chains, they're the first ones in the box. Now look at this. Have no care for the congregation at the clothes? Yeah. I remember that. Mm -hmm. I said, what the hell is this? Get off the yell, get off the damn box. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell is wrong with you? So where was we at? Go back to um, Mark. We was at Mark, right? Mark 4. Women are like that, cover just as hell. I told a brother, he said he was, he's in the military, he got out. So he's been trying to get 100%. Uh, what is it called, 100%? Disability. Disability. So he finally got it. So he says, I'm gonna be making, I'm gonna be getting a check for like, I guess something like three grand. I said, don't tell your wife. He says, why? I said, she, if, as soon as you tell her, she's gonna figure out how to spend the money every month. So, month goes by, two months go by, I happen to run into him, see the brother. He said, Bishop, you know what, remember you told me don't tell the wife? I said, yeah, he said, I didn't listen to you. I told my wife, and I regret it. He said, as soon as the check come, she has a list of things that we need to buy. Every month, for the past two months, he said, I can't save a penny. I said, I told you. 
They come just like that. Always, I need this, I need that. Bye, bye, bye. I said, that's them. That's how they are. Where we at? Mark chapter 4, verse 17. And have no root in themselves, and so endure but for a time. Afterward, when affliction or persecution arises for the word's sake, immediately they are offended. And these are they which are sown among thorns, such as hear the word, and the cares of this world, and the deceitfulness so of... the cares of this world, we went to 1 John 2.15, cares of this world. And the what? And the deceitfulness of riches... Now, we didn't finish that. Go back to 1 Timothy 6. We didn't finish that. I got distracted. I started wandering in my mind. <laughs> 1 Timothy 6, what, what was your verse 17? Verse 17 is 9, verse 9. Verse Timothy 6 and verse 9. But they that will be rich fall into temptation. Stop. Now there's nothing wrong. Let's read above it. Let me show you something. Start at 6 and read down. Verse 6. But godliness with contentment is a great gain. So there's nothing. Godliness with contentment means wherever you're at in life, that's good. There's nothing wrong with uh, uh, doing better for yourself, as, but as we read down, I'm going to show you the difference. Go ahead. For we brought nothing into this world. Now, and the reason I say that is because a brother may say, so you mean I shouldn't try to get a better job? Yes, by all means, try and get a better job. But this f verse 6 is going into something lawful. Lawful. Go ahead. For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. Go ahead. And having food and raiment, let us be there with content. Be content with where you're at. That don't mean you can't improve your job situation, your finances. But watch the next verse. But they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare. So what is this rich going with? Those that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare. Is that lawful? No, no. no this is unlawful. This is unlawful. You're doing things that, that will trap you up. Uh, like for example, uh, drug money is quick money. That's what they call in the movie, short money. You get rich quick, you can make that money quick, but there's a penalty that comes with that. Like these, what was that song by Beretta? I don't know how young, old you some of y'all in there. <laughs> don't do the crime if you can't do the time. No, 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 don't do it. Y'all don't know what I'm talking about. You're looking at me like, what are you talking about? Hezekiah knows. Oh, Hezekiah knows? So you know what I'm talking about? Okay, yeah, good. I don't know. One, one or two brothers know what I'm talking about. The rest of y'all like, hmm? So why? Because that's short money, quick money, short money. And you always look it over your shoulder. Who would have lived like that? We got a few brothers that used to be pimps and all that. And they, they got out of that game. But, and they had uh, big houses and all that. And they, they will always, they had to move from one state to another because where they lived at, everybody knew them and it was a target on them. So they didn't want to live like that. And we said, I want to change my life. I'm, I'm living dangerously. Okay, read that verse again. Verse 9. But they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snake. I'll give you another one. But y'all might know who I'm talking about. You have certain actors and actors, they become famous directors, writers, and they become are uh, multi-millionaires. And they always have a sob story of how they made it, how they lived in their car. Mm -hmm. They had nothing. All of a sudden, they met somebody who gave them an opportunity. And they became rich and famous. And you gotta sit back. Now, I know the back stories behind it. I'm like, they ain't telling the full truth. They met an Edomite who said, hey, how far can you pull your ankles Bob, <laughs> and I'm gonna help you out, and that's what happens. But they don't tell you that part. That's Harvey Weinstein all day. Exactly. Right. That that Edomite. That's what he was. He was banging women and men, grabbing men's uh, genitals and all that. Now I'm just going further than that, but doing other things. But that's what verse nine is talking about. Read that again. But they that will be rich fall into temptation. You want to be rich? You're gonna be tempted. Tempted to do what? Tempted to do a lot of things. If you do it, you like rappers. What's that? They got this thing all on YouTube where they got uh, damn, I can't remember the name of the videos. Where they say they they got uh, certain rappers. They go to these parties, and there's a room in the back, and you got to go in the room in the back if you want to make it. 
and his video cameras back there to make sure you stay shh based on what you see. We're gonna make it in that career. Like all these rappers in this room. I US all you rapper brothers. How many of you in here rap? Nobody's a rapper today. Okay. You got about five rappers. Five rappers. Now most rapping brothers, maybe not y'all in here, they want to be discovered. Right? They want to be discovered. Oh, put my, I want to do a video and put it out there. Or so put it on SoundCloud. No, oh, I'm sorry. I said it, I said his name. Somebody might hit a hit a song. Read that verse again. But they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare. You fall into temptation and a snare. That's what happens. Go ahead. And into many foolish and hurtful lusts. Y'all see that? And into many foolish and hurtful lusts. Go ahead. Which drown men in destruction and perdition. Which drown men in destruction and hell. Go ahead. For the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith. You, oh, I'll give you another one. Uh, a choir boy in five heartbeats. I'll tell you the story. He was in the uh, school back in old school. He got that gig. He said, I'm gonna I'm I'm do this for the truth. I'm doing it. We ain't anybody heard it from that dude ever again. Ever again. It was a few, one sister in, uh, uh, where's Captain Yadon at? Houston, Houston. Houston, Houston. She wanted to be America's next model. What's, is that the name of it? America's next top model. Yeah. She auditioned and she got it. And they got her doing lesbian scenes and all that. And she's on she's on video talking about I tried to tell my friends that all white people are not the devil, but they don't believe me. You guys are so nice. Mm -hmm. With the Edomite women. Simple as hell. Read it again. For the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith. Erred from the faith. And pierced themselves through with many sorrows. And pierced themselves through with many sorrows. So let's go back to Mark 4. And what verse you was at? Verse 19. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Mark 4, verse 19. And the cares of this world, and the deceitfulness of riches, and the lust of other things entering in. And the lust of other things. The lust of other things. Give me uh, Sirach 18. The lust of other things. Uh, Sirach 18, it's around verse 30, I think. Sirach, chapter 18, verse 30. Go not after thy lust, mm -hmm. but refrain thyself from thine appetite. Remember what we just read, the lust of other things. So, Christ was saying there's other things that I'm not mentioning that's so vague that men and women can fall into. So, Sirach is explaining now. Read that again. Sirach, chapter 18, verse 30. Go not after thy lust. Go not after thy lust. Go ahead. But refrain thyself from thine appetite. Now use the terminology appetite as in context with your belly, because you know sometimes you want to eat, you got a craving or you want to eat something so bad. So likewise, in your mind, in your spirit, you crave for a certain type of lust that you feel is going to be so satisfying. Read it again. Go not after thy lust. But refrain thyself from thine appetites. Refrain yourself from your appetites. He's going to explain why. If thou givest thy soul the desires that please her. See that? The desires that please her. If you give your soul the desires that please her. Okay. She will make thee a laughing stock to thine enemies. She, oh, she will make thee a laughing stock to your enemies. Okay. That malign thee. That hate you. Why? Because your enemies wait for you to fall. You tell you going around with this Bible stuff, you ever pick the commandments. People are waiting for you to fall. Read the verse again. Go not after thy lust, but refrain thyself from thine appetites. Go not after your lust. Christ said, and the lust of other things creeping in. Hmm. Hmm. So that's very vague, the lust of other things creeping. It could be anything. Read that again. Go not after thy lust, but refrain thyself from thine appetites. Mm -hmm. If thou givest thy soul the desires that please her, 
She will make thee a laughing stock to thine enemies that malign thee. Six fifteen. Six fifteen. Give me another story. First Corinthians chapter six, verse fifteen. Know ye not that your bodies are the members of Christ? Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them the members of an harlot? God forbid. That's a harlot is a prostitute, right? Okay? What? Know, know ye not that he which is joined to an harlot is one body? For two, saith he, shall be one flesh. What is it called? Read. But he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. No, read on. What is it called? Flee, it flee fornication. Fornication. When you deal with prostitutes, that's fornication. Why do we bring that up? Because now here you got the next brother. I've been in this truth three years. I can't find a woman. I just happen to be on Backpage. Is that what it's called? Yeah. Yeah. Backpage.com. Mm -hmm. And I just happen to see a, a certain woman that I, that I was interested in. Yeah. So I just paid a couple of bucks for her. And, and, and how did it come out? How did, how, how did it, one thing get this? Now I'm jumping. It's another story. I, I'm bl I was blending the two, but I'm going to switch it. Here's the brother. Uh, how did it get discovered? Well, the girl came over, and little did I know that when she came over, she left my front door unlocked. I told her to lock it. She didn't lock it. So me and her was getting busy. Two niggas came in and beat the hell out of me and tied me up and robbed me. So now I so said, that's how it gets discovered. Leave them hoes alone. A lot of them be setting you up. Set up, gotcha. You thought you was clear, ain't nobody gonna know. Nobody gonna find out, okay? Something gonna happen, it's gonna be discovered. Go from there, go to 1 Peter 2.11. Scripture say, leave them harlots alone. You don't know what it's like, bro. It's been five years. <laughs> First Peter chapter 2, verse 11. Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lusts, which war against the soul. Fleshly lusts. War against the soul. Fleshly lust, war against the soul. Meaning that, that's a battle, there's a battle going on. I'll give another story. True story, I always give you true stories. Probably gonna call me up. Can you check the FBI database? I said, I don't have access to the FBI database. Do you know somebody that got access? I said, I know somebody got access to it. Can you find out if there's a warrant for my arrest? Why do I need to find out if there's a warrant for your arrest? He says, something happened. What happened, bro? Talk to me. What's going on now? He says, well, a thing popped up on my computer and it says, the FBI will be notified. I said, hmm. I said, there's only a few things with the FBI. Well, your computer, what was yours? He says, Google. I said, Google will send you that message for one of few things. I said, so what did you do? Tell me. Tell me the truth now. He said, well, I just happened to see a picture and I just clicked on it. It was, I said, what was it? Was it a porno picture? He said, yeah, it was porn. I said, what kind? He says, regular. I said, no, bro. You don't give pop-up threats regarding the FBI on regular porn. I said, it has to be a certain type of porn. I said, if you don't tell me the truth, I'm gonna hang up. He said, okay. It was kitty porn. Kitty porn? What the hell is wrong with you? He said, I didn't do nothing. I never did nothing. I was just curious. Curiosity killed the cat. I said, I'm going to do you the i I'm going to chat. I said, but I'll be warning you, brother, stay off that stuff. Read the verse again. Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers. And I should have asked him, was it a boy, girl, boy or a girl? But I didn't ask that question. I left. Read it again. Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lusts, which war against the soul. Those, those lusts war against the soul. Give me that Job 31. Uh, verse 1. This is what the prophet Job said what he said. And this comes with trial and practice. Trial and practice. I know, brother, you don't know what it's like. I know what it's like. Married brothers be looking at porn too. Because you know your wife get, get an attitude and you don't even want nothing from her. Stank behind. 
So what happened? Now you start looking at the poem. Watch what Job said. Just mess with us. Well, first, verse 1. Job 31 and verse 1. I made a covenant with my eyes. Job said, I made a covenant and agreement with my eyes. Go ahead. Why then should I think upon a man? Why then should I think upon a man? That's what we all have to do. Because, it, and that's when Satan comes. You get in an argument with your woman, she don't want to give you none, you don't want none from her anyway, because she get on your damn nerves. Now you're on your phone, and he saw made it very easy to access porn. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Here you go, brother, you know the story, you know the story. Here's the officer. I see him arguing with a brother, he brings, the officer brings the younger brother, who's a soldier, up to the front. Pastor, this brother's looking at porn. He's railing the soldier, so I'm just sitting there listening. So he scolds him for looking at porn. He going to say, the officer says to me, he said, hey, have you seen the latest uh, Batman trailer or something, some movie? I said, no, nah, I didn't see it. He said, let me show you. He said, yo, it's bad. So he, he hands me the phone, and it's still, it's buffering, buffering, but it didn't come through. Now, sometimes these phones will pop up to the last thing you were looking at. What pops up? Ana, anime, a Japanese poor hente. It's called hente, hente porno anime. I said, bro, I said, here you go. Oh, give me the phone, give me the phone. I said, did you just curse this brother out for that? And you're doing the same damn thing. You need to be ashamed of yourself and go apologize to the brother. What the hell is wrong with you? My people are crazy. That's why in Galatians uh, 6 and 1, get that one? Galatians 6 and 1. Galatians chapter 6, verse 1. Brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fall, ye which are spiritual, restore such in one in the spirit of meekness, considering thyself. Consider yourself when you're judging somebody. Go ahead. Lest thou also be tempted. Because you might be tempted too. And that's exactly what happened. So go back to Job 31 and 1. Job 31 and 1. I made a covenant with mine eyes. Why then should I think upon a man? You got to get to the point, like when brothers be at camp. You know when you be teaching, you be strong in the spirit. And right coming down a block is Betty with the big booty. And then the script, you start stuttering because your eyes is doing this. And you got to go, bro, get back in the spell. Oh, 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 you got to catch yourself. It comes with time. That's why Christ said to Peter, when you are converted, strengthen your brother. That takes time. You tell the women they, uh, it's evil for them wearing pants and you know, Within, you like the way that thing. And you gotta condition yourself through study, patience, experience to uh, condition your mind, discipline your mind, okay? So that goes with, uh, go back to Job 31 and read verse nine for us. Verse nine, if mine heart have been deceived by a woman, or if, or if I have laid wait at my neighbor's door, then let my wife grind unto another. You know that's what's heavy about that? Uh, uh, sister say, my husband's uh, always thinking I'm, I'm cheating on me. She, he accuses her of cheating on him with no proof. Now the first thing I think of is this verse. Read verse 9 again. If mine heart have been deceived by a woman, or if I have laid wait at my neighbor's door, then let my wife grind unto another. Sometimes when brothers are jealous regarding their wife, it's because they we're doing something. And because you're doing it, you think she doing it. That's what happens. I see it a lot of times. Yep. That's why you're always yelling at her about something stupid. Uh, give me Matthew 5, 27 to 29. Matthew chapter 5 verse 27 ye have heard that it was said by them of old time thou shalt not commit adultery but I say unto you that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her hath committed adultery with her already in his heart now you gotta throw a question up there like wait a minute before you get married didn't you lust after the woman cause you wanted her well Christ ain't talking about marriage he's talking about sex without marriage. That's the type of lust he's talking about. It ain't talking about you see the sister, you want to marry her, you lust after her. He ain't talking about that. 
This type is you lusting and you don't you want sex without marriage. You don't want her to be your wife. You just want sex with her. That's what he's talking about. And guess what that also goes with? Pornography. We'll be looking at it. You don't want that hoe. You don't want to marry her. But it just looks so good, so appealing. Wow, look at that. Look how she... Anyway. Um, <laughs> keep reading. <laughs> keep reading. And if thy right eye offend thee, pluck it out, and cast it from thee. For it is profitable for thee that one of thy members should perish, and not thy whole body should be cast into hell. What verse was that? That was verse 29. From there, give me second Ezra 16 and verse 67. I'm sorry. Second Corinthians 13 and 5. Then we're going to read second Ezra after this. Second Corinthians 13 and 5. Examine yourselves, whether ye be in the faith. Prove your own self. That's the point of these lessons, these classes. Examine yourself. When you get to the point and you can't identify your own sin, you have a problem. You have a problem. That, it, it says that. Read that whole verse again. Examine yourselves, whether ye be in the faith. Prove your own selves. Know ye not your own selves, how that Jesus Christ is in you? Except ye be reprobate. You're a reprobate. If you can't examine yourself and identify your sins, I know everything that's wrong with me. I always self, I, I, I self examine myself. When I'm going through scriptures, I'm like, okay, that was me. Yep, did, uh huh. That's how you should be. If you sit there like, no, there's nothing applies to me. I'm just holy. I'm just so. Give me that holy scripture. Holy. Yeah, Isaiah 65. Isaiah 65 is the holy scripture. We always use it for churches, but it, uh, Christian churches, but it also applies to brothers. <laughs> In here, 65, mm, verse 5. Which say, stand by thyself, come not near to me, for I am holier than that. What does God think about them? Read. These are a smoke in my nose, a fire that burneth all the day. When it says these are a smoke in my nose, meaning God can't stand you. Because you think you're so holy and righteous. Anybody think the scripture says, another scripture says in Isaiah, all our righteousness is as what? Filthy rags. So never get that holier than thou mentality. That's when we teach, we got to be able to relate to the people. Because we've been there, we've done that, right? But when you come to the standpoint of, oh, oh, I'm so holy and righteous, and you're a piece of SH, mm-mm. No, no, no. People need to know that you just like they are. That's why it says about Christ. Give me that one in uh, Hebrews 2 about his birth. Verse 14 and 16, I think. Which says he was made like us. And that makes him a faithful high priest for us. Where is it? 2.16. For verily he took not on him the nature of angels. Meaning there was no immaculate conception. He did not take on him the nature of angels. He was not immaculately uh, formed by Michael Archangel or Gabriel. Go ahead. But he took on him the seed of Abraham. He took on the sperm of Abraham. That's why Matthew 1, verse 1 through verse 15 gives you his earthly genealogy. And that's what everybody tried to ignore. Don't, no, don't read that. Don't read that. It's giving you his fathers. No, no, we don't want that though. Go ahead. Wherefore in all things it behooved him to be made like unto his brothers. See that? He was made like his brothers was made. Go ahead. That he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining to God. Go ahead. To make reconciliation for the sins of the people. For in that he himself hath suffered being tempted. He is able to succor them that are tempted. So you see that? Read that bottom part again. For in that he himself hath suffered being tempted. He was tempted just like we are. Why? Because he was made like us. He was, he's a flesh and blood just like us. He had brothers, he had sisters, a mother and father, forefathers and foremothers just like us. So what the struggles we go through, Christ went through too. Only difference was he was without sin. 
That's what makes makes him a faithful high priest. Everybody understand that? Yes, sir. Did you finish that, Isaac? He is able to succor them. Succor means comfort. Go ahead. That are tempted. Now go to Second Ezra 16 and 67. That's what I wanted. So you got to be able to examine yourself. You should be able to sit down, write down all your mental, psychological hang-up and flaws. And if you're on medication, keep taking the medication. Some of you crazy. Her sister said she's schizophrenic. Are you taking your medicine? She said, I stopped. I said, stop taking it again. She's sitting there looking at sisters, and she's seeing them talking to her, talking about she's talking about me. I'm like, sis, you, she didn't say nothing to you, but no, but I saw her in the spirit saying something. I feel like punching her face. Take your damn medication. <laughs> and don't come back till you start taking the medicine. Read that. Second Ezra 16, verse 67. Behold, God himself is the judge. Right. Fear him. That's why I would say our judgment on earth is temporary. No matter what a brother or sister has done, we can say, leave the school for six months, a year, whatever. It's temporary because after whatever time we said as men, we want to bring you back. Come on back. You watch online. Let's say, like, uh, the, remember in uh, Alabama, they got in a fist fight at camp? You're right. Two brothers, fist fighting in camp. I'm talking about throw down. We had to throw both of them out. We put them off, I think, for nine months, something like that. But they stayed in contact with brothers. We said, come on back. Our judgment is temporary, unless the Lord intervened and put you to death or something like that. But our judgment is not an eternal judgment, okay? But that's why Ezra says this, go ahead. Behold, God himself is the judge, fear him. Right, because he got the power of life and death in his hand, go ahead. Leave off from your sins. Leave off from your sins. And forget your iniquities. Uh -huh. To meddle no more with them. To meddle. What is that word? Can we look up that word meddle? M-E-D-D-L-E. Mm -hmm. M-E-D-D-L-E. -E. Is that how it's spelled? Mm -hmm. To involve oneself in a matter without right or invitation. Interfere officiously and unwantedly. Is there more? I want some oh, easier words. Yeah, I could get. Hold on, I'll look at it this way. Pry, intervene, intrude. Uh, let's see more synonyms. Infringe, tamper, and I like tamper. Okay, I can understand that word. What else? Snoop, trespass, barge in, break busybody. Okay, I like busybody. Meaning you playing, you're playing with the sin again. One brother was a cokehead. He starts dabbing. His, his coke drug dealer friend said, I'm going to give you this hit for free. It's on the house. I'm like, bro, you fell for that? You f That's how they get you hooked. Gotcha. <laughs> now he's, he can't get off. He can't break it now. He broke it. Give me that one when you, 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 you repent. It's in Peter. Then you get entangled again. You know what I'm talking about? It's in the book of Peter. Okay, thank you. Second Peter 2.20. This is the book of Second Peter. Let's start at 19. Second Peter chapter 2. Let's start at 18. Verse 18. For when they speak great swelling words of vanity, they are lured through the lust of the flesh, through much wantonness. I'm sorry, can we look up that word wantonness? W-A-N-T-O-N-N-E-S-S, -S, want, or the wanton. One given to self-indulgent flirtation or trifling. Self-indulgent flirtation or what? Or trifling. A lewd or lascivious person, mm -hmm. a pampered person or animal, a spoiled child. Okay. It says, they are lured through the lust of the flesh, through much wantonness. That goes into that uh, sexual lust. Le yeah, that's why it says lascivious person. Uh, well, what else was there? Sexually lawless or unrestrained. Loose. Lewd. Mm -hmm. Okay, read that again, Captain Isaac. 
For when they speak great swelling words of vanity, meaning BS, bull crap, that's what they're speaking, go ahead. They are lured through the lust of the flesh, through much wantonness. Those that were clean escaped from them who live in error. Who live in sin, go ahead. While they promised them liberty, they themselves are the servants of corruption. That's why you gotta be mindful. When these dudes on Facebook and YouTube, I'm talking about these overnight sensation Israelites. These dudes is bound in all manner of sin. That's why they don't want to be around no congregation. So you don't see them. They be all hooked up in drugs and all kind of stuff. I ain't calling no names. Y'all gonna know who it is later on. They be hooked up on drugs and they are giving you these speeches about um, follow their doctrine. Go ahead. For of whom a man is overcome, of the same is he brought in bondage. Okay. For if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world, through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. This is the brother that was on coke. He escaped it through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Go ahead. They are again entangled therein and overcome. You know what that entangled therein breaks down to? We just read the word. Give me the word. Metal. Metal. You start dabbling in it again. Stop meddling with it. Go ahead. The latter end is worse with them than the beginning. Now it's worse with you. It's worse. That's some heavy stuff right there. Go ahead. For it had been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than after they have the commandment delivered unto them. Read. But it has happened unto them according to the true proverb, the dog is turned to his own vomit again, and the soul that was washed to her wallowing in the mire. You went right back to the vomit. You went right back to the pit, the pig, as the pig in the muck and mire. Okay. Did you read, did you finish 2nd Ezra 16 and 67? Go back to that. 2nd Ezra 16 verse 67. Behold, God himself is the judge. Fear him. Leave off from your sins and forget your iniquities to meddle no more with them forever. Don't get entangled no more. Don't meddle with it. You're playing with fire. No, don't take a drag at a cigarette. Don't mess with it. Don't go on Facebook looking for your old girlfriend. Don't do it. Don't take another hit on the crack pipe or whatever. Don't do it. Go ahead. So shall God lead you forth and deliver you from all trouble. For behold, the burning wrath of a great multitude is kindled over you, and they shall take away certain of you and feed you, being idle, with things offered unto idols. Let's go on to what happened during the time of the Maccabees. Uh, jump back up. I want to stay in that chapter just a little bit. Uh, surely you know what's going on when you're sitting. Oh, yeah, start at 63. Verse 63. Surely he knoweth your inventions and what ye think in your hearts, even them that sin and would hide their sin. Stop right there. That's a heavy verse. We want to. Meditate on that verse just a little bit. Read it again. Read it slow. Surely he knoweth your inventions and what you think in your hearts, even them that sin and would hide their sin. What did uh, Paul say about that? What did Paul say about that? Notice we said, surely he knoweth your inventions, meaning the things you invent in your mind. For example, your inventions. People say adultery just happened. Adultery does not just happen. You have to invent the scenario. I'm gonna give you an example. Give me, hold this, we're coming right back here. Give me Job 24, I think it is, in the round verse 16 or 20 where it says they, wear, they disguise themselves. Watch, I think it's Job 24, it might be Job 20. 15. Where, where, is, where are we going? 24, 15. 24, 15. Job 24, verse 15. They, Job 24, 15. The eye also of the adulterer waited. The eye also of the adulterer. Wait, wait, wait. Everybody ain't got it. I don't want everybody to get it. My point is, you invent sin. Go ahead. The eye also of the adulterer waited for the twilight, saying, no eye shall see me, and disguiseth his face. So adultery is not accidental. It's planned. You have to disguise yourself. And you wait for the twilight. You don't, adultery is very, is rare, rarely done during uh, 
daytime hours. It's always at night, generally, not always, not 100%, but generally, that, you know, that twilight when it's like, it's, oh, that's that dawn stuff, right? Let's go talk to it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you got to disguise You say, hey, yo, Cap, you think I could borrow your car? I, I just want to go do something. I got a car, but I want to borrow his car. Why I want to borrow his car? Because if I'm in my car, you might know it's me. I'd rather borrow his car. It'll either throw you off or you might think it's him. Then I put on my hat, my little sunglasses, <laughs> and I go, somebody say, hey, meet, read the next verse. In the dark, they dig through houses, which they had marked for themselves in the daytime. They know not the light. See that? We already picked out the house where we're going to go. Go ahead. There's, the, uh -huh. there's a brother in Vegas recently, right after the visit that we were there with that thug, was it like a couple of days later? He was hanging out on the strip thinking no one would see him. And he was there like making out with a girl, right? Like on the strip, like cuddling her, making wow. out with a worldly, a worldly chick. Mm -hmm. And the brother that was driving the Uber happened to see him. Mm. And that's how he got caught with it. Wow. Wow. See that? Go ahead. For the morning is to them even as the shadow of death. Because in the morning, we, we see you. You want to do it at night? I wear my sunglasses at night. Co that's Corey Hayne, right? Nobody knows who I'm talking about. Like Corey Hayne. Oh, whoever. Anyway, you wear your sunglasses, you wear the hat, the hoodie. You're disguising yourself when you do this stuff. Even when you go out with the hole that you picked up on Backpage.com. You want to make sure nobody recognizes you, just in case. Did you finish that? For the morning is to them even as the shadow of death. If one know them, they are in the terrors of the shadow of death. You're terrified. Somebody recognize hey, Tyrone, hey, Tyrone. Oh, shoot. You don't know what you're going to do. You might piss yourself, drop a turd, anything. you just all messed up in the spirit. So go back to, uh, where, where was we at? This was the second Ezra? Second Ezra. About inventions. Second Ezra 16, verse 63. Surely he knoweth your inventions and what you think in your heart. So you invent scenarios to commit adultery. You have to create the situation. It's not by accident. Oh, I was just walking and down the street and I tripped and my rod fell into the vagina. That's not how adultery happens. It's planned. You plan to meet me at such and such at this time, at this location. That's what you do. That's what we all, we've done it. We've been there. Read it again. Surely he knoweth your inventions and what ye think in your hearts, even them that sin and would hide their sin. See that? Even them that sin and would hide their sin. Go ahead. Therefore hath the Lord exactly searched out all your works, and he will put you all to shame. Wow. Go ahead. And when your sins are brought forth, you shall be ashamed before men. And your own sins shall be your accusers in that day. Now, you see that part about, and when your sins are brought forth, you shall be ashamed before men. So this is the, this is the earthly judgment here that we deal with when it says ashamed before men. And your own sins shall be your accusers in that day. So that's what often happens. So it's either you take the judgment and humble down, stay in contact, watch on, and then come back so you can get it right. Or... When them sins accuse you, you're going to know it's not me. You're still holding on to the lie, to the deceit. Give me that Proverbs 5 about the dude that was almost in the midst of all evil because he did not uh, listen to the voice of his teachers. You know what I'm talking about? I think it's Proverbs 5. Is that it? Uh, well, the 12, however I hated instruction. Yes. Proverbs 5, instead of 12. And say, how have I hated instruction? This is most brothers. Go ahead. And my heart despised reproof. My heart hated reproof. Correction. And, and have not obeyed the voice of my teachers. See that? And have not obeyed the voice. Of... So when people think, I don't need nobody to teach me. You're, I don't know what Bible you're reading. Mm -hmm. The Spirit is not coming down teaching you. Man has to teach you. That's what, and have not obeyed the voice of my teachers. Nor inclined my ear to them that instructed me. Mm -hmm. I was almost in all evil in the midst of the congregation and assembly. You say, stay off the kitty porn. Don't hang around the drug dealers. Stay off that stuff. And then don't listen. And then boom, the most I go, I'm going to bring it out now. And you, the Lord will create a scenario you can't get out. I'll give you another example. Uh, oh, 
Brother comes home, he's, he shared an apartment with another brother. And there was an East Indian dude in the apartment. And the East Indian dude, as soon as the brother opens the door, he bolts down the stairs and running. He's buttoning <laughs> up his shirt. So the brother goes, hey, who was that? He goes, oh, I was just sh I was sharing the fly with the dude. And the he said, you share the fly with the East Indian dude? He goes, yeah, you know, he never know what his father is. He says, but why did he run when he saw me? I, I don't understand why he ran like that. He, well, I don't know why he ran. I don't know. So, you know on your computer sometimes, you forget to close out all your boxes. Uh -huh. So, most high says, sleep now, go to sleep. <laughs> so the other brother says, click, because they share a computer. And then you, you got the, hey, meet me at my apartment, says it on a damn, uh, a uh, homo chat room thing. It was like a Craigslist. Cra yeah, Craigslist hookup yeah. for men. Yeah. Yeah. Got cold busted. Mm -hmm. said, see this? And then, I had to bring out the, here's the evidence. Oh, Brother had to print out. History. Brought it out to history. Hey, 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 that's not me, that's him. Bruh, what the hell's going on now? So while all these scriptures we read, because we know brothers struggle with different things, apply what we're going over. I was making funny, but it's meant for a reason. Their spirits out there, spirits be popping. Pop, 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 pop. Apply what is written. Apply. Examine yourself. Take a deep breath. Examine yourself. If you need to make a list and check it twice about yourself, find out if you're naughty or nice. Just write down about yourself. Write a little journal about yourself. We went over that recently. We did a you went over that recently? Examining yourself. Brothers gotta do that thing. Class. They gotta do it. We like to hide ourselves. Yeah. We don't we, like we don't we really don't know the real you. We know who you allow us to know. We meet your manager. Just like women meet your manager, you show us your manager. <laughs> we meet the you hold my son, y'all shot the strong brother. But meanwhile, back at the ranch. He's on kitty porn and he's on this and he's talking to this one. That's the real you. But you in order to overcome, you got to what's that scripture? Uh, he that confesses his sins. Give me that one. First, first John 1, it's actually, it's verse 9, but 8's good too, because he's the one that says. Where we go? First John 1. Eight's where he says, he said, you have no sin, you're alive. But then uh, in 9, he says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. Right, that's it right there. Read that. First John 1 and verse what? What verse, Cap? Uh, start at 8. First John 1 and verse 8. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. That's the brother that does not self-examine. Mm -hmm. He won't self-examine. He can, you know, you know, I'm going to tell how certain brothers are. They can point out everybody else's sin in the room, except their own. Mm -hmm. Watch them. That's an evil spirit right there. The, hey, remember the dude that used to be with us? The elder used to be with us, mm -hmm. and he portrayed himself as so, like, like he had no problems. And then when the most I brought it out, it was a damn monsoon in the school. It was crazy. Read that again. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. That's what we were reading tonight. Brothers that hide their sins, conceal their sins. Go ahead. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. You know what that goes with? Counsel. Speak to brothers. Let them know what's, what's you got going on in here. Don't tell everybody about it. I always tell, don't tell everybody your issue. Because you never, some people are here for, for no damn good. they just here to, to expose you. Then they're going to do a video on you. So don't tell everybody your stuff. You got you, the script. What does that script say? Of one counselor, I can't quote. One of a thousand. One of a thousand. Is that how? It, no, that ain't what it says. The one in the Sirach. It's something about a uh, one counselor. How does it go? Thirty-seven verse seven. The one that counsels for himself. Let me hear. It. Let me hear if that's what I want. 37 verse 7. Every counselor extolleth counsel, but there is some that counseleth for himself, 
Beware of a counselor, and know before what need he has, for he will counsel for himself, lest he cast a lot upon thee. That's fine, but that ain't what I was talking about, but we can roll with that one. Be careful who you counsel with. Some people just counsel for themselves to make you look bad. They save a diary on you, and then they want to expose you later on to humiliate you. Watch them evil spirits like that. Okay, did you find what I was looking for? Six, six, six. Where? Six, Chapter six. six. Chapter six, verse six. Let me hear that. Chapter six and verse six. Be in, be in peace with many. Nevertheless, have but one counselor of a thousand. Yeah, one counselor of a thousand. And you don't counsel with your peers. That's not who you counsel with. Brothers, like sisters, do that a lot. She been in the truth two weeks. She got a lot of problems. She on counsel with a sis who came in a week ago. Mm -hmm. That's just stupid. You got to counsel with somebody who has time, experience, and the truth to show and guide you through the scriptures. This is what the scriptures say about that. Then, guess what? Then once you get the scriptures, it's your job to, give me that one in uh, James where it says, uh, build yourself, building yourself up on your most holy faith, something like that. You know what I'm talking about? Yes, we're gonna read that one. What did I say, what did I say? You said most holy faith. Yes, in James, I think it's James. It says build yourselves up, find that. Who got it recorded? Jude 1 and 20. Oh, it's Jude, thank you, see? I make mistakes too. Jude 1 and 20. Jude chapter 1 verse 20. But ye, beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith. Now, I wanted that for a reason. It's like going to the gym. You can't go to the gym, like me and I, well, let's say we go to the gym, and he's doing all the exercises, and I'm just sitting there looking. Am I going to develop? No. no. I got to put in the time and the effort just like him. So here, read that again. But ye, beloved, Building up yourselves on your most holy faith. We give you the scripture. You want counsel, we give you the scriptures about anger. We give you the scriptures about lust. We give you the scriptures about jealousy. You have to build yourself up. And now you have the tool. Meditate and study those scriptures daily. We can't do it for you. It's like married couples. Every week they, they come for counsel and we're giving them the same scripture. After a while, we're like, we're not, what else can we give you? You have to start to do what? Apply. Apply it. Build up yourself. Build yourselves up. You got to sit down, go through those scriptures, and apply it daily. It's just redundant over and over. I'm giving you the same scriptures. Bro, that's lust. You know, you're going to lust. You're going to love it. Yeah, I know that already. Right. Before you know it, you'll be counseled, and they'll quote the scripture before the counselor even get to it. You don't even know it. The problem is you've never been applying. That's the problem. Read that again. But ye, beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. So you gotta build up yourselves. That's why the Corinthians says, examine yourselves, whether you be in the faith. Know ye not your own selves, except you be reprobate? You gotta do that for self. Prove your own self. Build yourself up. What you got for us, Kev? Um, with the counsel, which you were talking about, Sirach 8, 17. Sirach, chapter 8, verse 17. Consult not with a fool, for he cannot keep counsel. Do no secret thing before a stranger, for thou, for thou knowest not what he will bring forth. That's what, so that's what it's talking about. Be at peace with everybody, but have that one counsel in a thousand. Why? Because you don't know. That's somebody, he's, he might not keep that counsel secret, right? That's the brother that's going to run around uh, spreading, spreading what you entrusted him for, for advice. And it says, uh, a stranger, because you got to realize you don't really know a brother. Like Bishop was bringing out earlier. You see this outward thing. You see the brother here wearing the fringes, applying things outwardly. You don't know what's going on with that brother. That all goes part of with proving a friend as well. He goes, you don't know what he's going to bring forth. Go ahead, read on. Open not thine heart to every man, lest he requite thee with a shrewd turn. So you got to be mindful of who you confide in, who you confess these things Two, you don't just run around just because the brother's been here sitting next to you for two, three months and say, hey, uh, this is the brother I'm going to go to. 
You want to make sure that you're going to go to somebody that's going to be able to give you what you need to help you with that situation. Not, not somebody that's going to scratch the itch and agree with you or not give you that rebuke. You want somebody, see that's why you got some brothers, they, those are the ones that pull themselves away. That they don't want to talk to certain brothers or say certain things because they know they're going to get corrected. So they stop talking to you, right? Maybe somebody that was talking for a while, but you always bring in correction. I don't counsel with that brother. He's always correcting me. <laughs> Y'all got to be mindful of who you choose as counselors and what type of advice you take from who. Okay. Any, any questions? Well, I guess everybody's good then. No praises. Well, all right. Let's get a little hand. Okay. Happy Saturday. We got Meditate on tonight's class. Shalom, Israel. I'm Elder Nathaniel, Israel United in Christ. YouTube likes to shut our channels down, as some of you have noticed, <laughs> ever so often. Subscribing to join IUIC will assure you will always stay connected to our YouTube accounts. We want to do our best to make sure this truth gets up. Please click and join our subscriber YouTube channel called Join IUIC to stay linked to all of our videos. So again, please make sure you subscribe to this and join IUIC channel to get your latest updates on all our YouTube channels. Shalom.